You are watching this video because you have an old Mac with 8 GB of RAM. You are watching this video because you want to lower the memory pressure. Or you are watching this video just because you want to know how the RAM memory works in general. Either way, in this video, I will answer on all of these questions. Let's start off by saying that most of the Mac users don't need to worry about the memory usage at all. Unless you see some problems, the Mac is slow or not responsive, then you might have a look at this. But in general, Mac is doing everything itself. So let me show you how it works. First, I will open Activity Monitor and check how much memory is my Mac using. The easiest way is to launch it from the Spotlight and on top, switch to Memory tab. In a moment, you will see a whole list of applications and things which are using the memory. You can sort it by the most consuming one. And what you want to look at is this small table at the bottom. There you can see how the memory is distributed and check the memory pressure. For demonstration, I'm using my old Intel 8GB of RAM Mac. Soon I'll be switching to new M1 Pro, so I'll have better comparison to this. I'll also make some other videos about the new Mac, so if you are interested in it, you know what to do. But anyway, back to the memory. How much the Mac is currently using is the first number. Well, technically the second. The first number just says how much you have in your computer. You can see here it's not using all the memory. But even if it's all taken, it doesn't need to mean you are overloading the memory. It's just the Mac using it to the full potential. In general, what Mac does with the memory is that it will look at the files and applications you are currently using and it will cache them in this memory. So once you need to open some document, it will not be opening from the SSD, but it will open it from the memory so it will make it much faster. Mac also uses part of your SSD to store some of these cached files. It's called swap. I will talk about it more later in the video. And one more thing that Mac is doing to lower the memory pressure is to compress caches which are not used right now. This compression is super fast, so once you need any of these compressed files, it will be instantly ready. And last, there is this wired memory. It's mostly system memory, so you can't change anything about it. Now let's have a look at the graph, the memory pressure. In the beginning, it's important to realize that different apps will take part of the memory. They will redistribute it between themselves. It doesn't mean they need all of that. For example, if you open just two applications, you might see that they take almost the whole RAM memory. It doesn't mean that if you open a third application, that it will overload it. No, it will just take from these two and redistribute it together. So each one of them will get some part of it. Free memory doesn't help you with anything. It's sitting there for nothing. It's powered up by the Mac, but it's not doing anything. So if you're Mac using it fully, it's better for you because you are using the Mac to the fullest potential. Basically, until this graph is green, there is nothing to worry about. Everything is under control. But now let's put some pressure on the Mac and open some more applications. I'll open a lot more tabs in Safari. And when I start loading up more and more on the Mac, the graph will eventually turn yellow. Maybe sometimes red. Yellow means that the memory is using the first technique I mentioned before, the compression. It's compressing the files used by the RAM memory in order to make them smaller so you can use less memory and you will have more free. It will actually stay inside of that memory, it's just compressed. And once you reopen the app or document which is compressed, it will automatically decompress it without any delay. This way it can push 8 gigabytes of RAM even further. If even this is not enough and Mac needs more memory, it will actually float some data to your SSD. It's called swap. It basically takes a piece of your SSD and stores some of the memory there, just temporarily. 
It's the things you are not using right now and it will be swapping between the SSD and memory once they are needed. Apple is using very fast SSDs. That's why even with a low memory, low as 8GB, you can perform much more on the Mac than on some other regular computer. Because it can use this swap and offload some of this data to your SSD. And because it's very fast, you will not notice any delay because it's taking it very fast from the disk and back between the memory. And that's exactly that red part of the graph you can see. That's when Mac is performing the swap. Once more to summarize it. When the graph is green, then everything is fine. You have enough memory to do all the tasks you are currently doing. When it's turning yellow, it means that it's performing the compression. So the cache files are compressed in order to create some more space in the memory RAM. And when it's turning red, that means you are kind of overloading it. There is not enough memory to perform all the tasks. And that's the moment when Mac will offload some of these unused cached files to your SSD and replace it with the things you are currently doing. I believe now it's all clear. But the question is, how you can actually reduce the memory pressure? Well, the basic advice is to always get more memory. It's so easy to say. If you have a desktop computer, you can do that. But if you have MacBook, you obviously can't add any memory there. So what you can do now? Well, look back to my Mac. What we did before, we did so many tabs and applications and it was still performing well, even within 8 gigabytes of RAM memory. So even without doing anything and bothering about the memory pressure, you can do a lot. But one simple tip how to increase your RAM memory is to actually take care of your own storage. Clean up your disk, don't run it all the way to 90% or don't go to the last gigabyte. Because that way you are limiting your Mac and you are limiting the memory. It can't perform the swap and you are overloading it. So the first and the best tip is to take care of your own SSD disk. Make sure you have enough space there for the swap so the memory can offload some of this data which are not needed right now. Do some cleanup, get rid of files you don't need, offload some other data to an external drive. I actually have many different videos about cleaning the storage, cleaning the system and so on. If you need to do that, you can check some of these videos after. If the cleaning doesn't help and you are noticing the Mac is slow, what you need to do is to actually reduce the pressure by quitting some apps or reducing the number of tabs you are using on Safari. And once you quit few things, you will see it will be as fast as usual. And now at the end of the video, you can do the usual as well. You know, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want. And I'm already working on a new video. So I'll be happy to see you there. Thanks for watching.